supposed to be going up, not down. <laughs> that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> and I think I think if you go to like the, I mean, we're, we're only seven episodes in, but I'm pretty sure more than half come from Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> You're totally uh, right. It's, <laughs> it's the most quotable. It's the most quotable of all the films. It just is. Uh, hey, welcome back, everybody, to another happy landing. <clears throat> Sorry. I hope it's all congested a little bit this morning, but uh, we are here. Tanner, thank you for joining us again, as always, as the guest uh, permanent host of uh, this show. Hello. Uh, my s- setting looks different. If you haven't been watching the newer videos we've been posting, I rearranged some stuff, finally got some good mic equipment here, and... Getting more professional by the day. I love it. I like it. Uh, but we're here to talk some Star Wars. Um, before we get too far into it, thank you to the Movie Meal patrons, Steve, Kimberly, and uh, Karen, for being uh, top patrons who are supporting the show. Uh, you guys rock. And then uh, please go get some of our Movie Meals merch. Um, it, it's awesome stuff. Uh, sweatpants. Uh, sweatshirts, long sleeve tees. We got a spring line going to be coming out here in a couple months. Um, we're working on some cool designs uh, that, that we've come up with. Um, I hope there's a hot But go yellow. check that out. Before we get into any further of the video, this video is actually sponsored, guys. Movie Meals has a sponsor. A good friend of ours, a good friend of ours, has started a new website uh, called amateur auteur it is awesome he does great essays about pretty much anything in the world of entertainment please go give him some love he's got essays about friends the ideal heroes uh his website is built so beautifully go check him out his writing is exceptional and we love everything about him i've loved both his essays so far he's got two up and currently working on even more to come so movie meals please please go check out Amateur Artur. You can follow them on Twitter as well. Everything will be linked down in the description. Go check it out. Oh, there's a couple of yellow shirts. Nice. Uh, so we're going to get into it here in the first order of business. Uh, first order of business. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars pod. Oh. Um, we're going to start with the High Republic uh, kind of after show, show they do. Um yes. On the star, the official Star Wars YouTube channel, which if you are watching this and you are not subscribed to that, you make no sense to me. <laughs> uh, but uh, <clears throat> I'll lead this one off. Uh, so we finished the novel last week. We touched on it. If you're curious of our thoughts on the High Republic novel, go check that out on last week's episode. Uh, for this uh, after show, I really dug it. They kind of they start off with giving you a little timeline of canon which is always helpful in the star wars universe um they end up bringing on some of the authors or two of the authors um charles soul who wrote the high republic novel we just read light of the jedi and then uh i i apologize i'm blanking on the woman's name um who wrote the young young adult novel for for um uh, uh, the, the, that High Republic book, but they, they intertwine, they meet as well as, as well as one of the head, like story, storyteller producers who's in charge of like making sure everything gets together. All right. Um, and they just kind of touched on, on some of the characters, why they came up with, you know, some of the things they did, Claudia where Gray. they got, sorry, Claudia. Was, Gray. I don't, I don't think it was Claudia Gray. You're, you're looking at the wrong one. It it uh, just, uh we sure about that one because that was yeah she wrote the book um into the dark which is uh, one of the young adult novels that she does and it's I'm... it's it's the other one it's the oh. younger novel one the kids novel one is oh excuse me. got it got yeah. it got it got it got it uh because it follows one of the padawans that is in light of the jedi um and part of their trials oh okay interesting. Man, um, I, 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 I remember I ended up sending you that uh, that little, like, flowchart talking about, like, all the characters across all the canon in the in the different yeah. uh, books. I don't know about you, but I found that so incredibly useful. Anyone that might be listening to any of those books or so on, I highly recommend that you just try to look up. Um, I just went into Google and looked up Li- uh, Light of the Jedi characters, and then it was like the first or second one. There's a flow chart of every single character, what they're doing, what their timeline is. It's very, help- very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, 
And they they just talked a little bit about the collaborative effort. Um, I like that they they showed some scenes of of all of the writers in a writer's room discussing characters and they talked about how normally on a book you're isolated while you write and in this it's very different because you need to do all that um absolutely it is justina ireland justina who ireland. wrote who wrote star wars the high republic a test of courage which is the the like children's novel which i want to get for my classroom because i'm always looking for ways to diversify uh yeah. our reading materials um which I haven't read yet, but I, I am going to read it because I want to get it for my classroom and read it to the kids because uh, I teach little children. Um, and then Claudia Gray has the Into the Dark novel, which just uh, came out this year. Um, but I don't believe it's on audio yet, is it? Uh, no, that one I don't think I, – I don't believe that one hits audio until – Like June or something? June or something. Wait, wait, it, that one actually might be on audio in the next, I think it hits February sometimes, sometimes. Oh, okay. Um, um, Ju July was when uh, the book two. The sequel. The, yes, the, book, the sequel okay. to Light of the Jedi will be coming out. I Charles So Okay, so yeah, Claudia Gray's Into the Dark, uh, she wasn't on this. I've seen her um, in some old YouTube podcasts I used to watch that aren't around anymore. She was a guest on a couple Star Wars podcasts, uh, and I really like her. Obviously, Lost Stars is still my favorite novel I've read. So I, uh, uh, you know, Lost Stars I don't own. My brother owns it, but I, uh, unless I stole it. Did I steal it? I didn't steal it. But, um, I, uh, I want to own it, even though I probably won't reread it for a good long time physically, just but I just, I love the novel so much. But yeah, the, the after show was really cool. It ended with some kind of, they're doing like little skits and whatnot, or like little, kind of kind of like the um, Game of Thrones, that YouTube series, The History of Game of Thrones. I know you mentioned yeah, it. It's, it's kind of uh, like that. The Histories and Lores of Game of Thrones. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty fun as they, they've got these little animatics that they that they bring to the show. Yeah, that's uh, basically what Star Wars is doing. They're doing like yeah. little small clips of a lot of these characters. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh no, you're all the, you're all good. It's it's just, I, I it, it's a fun it's a fun thing thing that they bring to it that really kind of, uh, sometimes puts a face to a Jedi. I I know that sometimes it's weird when it comes to reading books that you um you hear the uh, character's description. Or, sorry, in our case, the audio, you hear the character's description or you read the character's description and then you get this image in your head of what that character, uh, of what this character looked like. And some people prefer to keep it that way, but personally, um, when they actually were able to do these beautiful little animatics and show them, oh man, I, I, there's something that I really enjoy when you get a beautiful artist rendition and then you can see that person and be like, yes, that is exactly yeah. who I imagined. Yeah, um, I agree. And it's a nice little after show. It it, it kind of, you know, it doesn't help bring guidance to the novel at all, but it gives a little inside to it. And it's it's just kind of cool to, to see that, I think. Honestly, um, it's a great it's a great intro, uh, like top down view uh, of the beginning of the High Republic. If anyone is looking yeah. or interested, like remotely interested to get into it, I genuinely I think that would actually be the starting point. Uh, I, I would agree. Just because just cause it really... Uh, oh, what's what's the word that I'm looking for? It it, it really kind of it gives you the, the slight taste of this. If this is a Star Wars story that you are interested in. And I would hope that if you're watching us again, like Al said, that you would actually be somewhat interested in watching it. Because it's good. You should go read it. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Um... Yeah, it's a it's a nice little show. So if you are a fan of the novels, um, it doesn't really spoil anything. It just kind of gives a synopsis, and they the stuff they talk about with the Starlight Beacon, I really liked, and you get a little insight into how authors write. And and um, Justine talked about how uh, you know when you write, I can't remember the phrase because I'm not a writer, but she talked about a, a, a term that is used for an object in storytelling, and this object kind of becomes like the big like focus of your story um mcguffin no it wasn't that it oh, was okay. a word I'd, i've never heard before because i'm not smart enough to write a novel but um good i thing uh good thing i liked pretty. it 
Yeah, well, I don't know about I think you're 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 with the wrong guy. You need to be with Kyle. <laughs> Kyle's the pretty one and I'm the loose cannon. <laughs> but it's always been here, Tanner. Um by the way, audience, if I'm looking over here a lot, it's because this is where Tanner is for me, even though he'll be next to me over here or something. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, it's she talks about the Starlight Beacon being that kind of object in this story, and it just I, it made me like the novel a little bit more. It made me really, you know, it's always nice to get a face to the people who are writing these novels right. too, right. Um, and it, it it see them as people and the the fans of Star Wars that they are, uh, which was just really cool. But do you have anything else on the? On the little after show, or on it's, I think my uh, just talking about my favorite part was definitely the kind of the round table as they discuss a little bit more yeah. of the Nye Hill and um, what what the setting of it as they as they uh, I think the one that, that that really stuck with me of this being the Golden Age or the Renaissance of the Jedi because everything yeah. everything being taken away this is the the hopeful point in time of uh, of the Jedi, but. Um, I, I like like we talked about before. I'm really hoping that we get to go down. Um, we're getting the Jedi at this high point, and I want to see what causes them to get to where we see them by the time that Episode One to Episode Three starts. Because yeah, I don't know about you. I, like my interpretation, they're very different. They're very different from uh, when they were in. Um, uh, like let's say end uh, end of Revenge of the Sith, they're very different now than they were then. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you agree. with I that. would agree. Yeah, no, I would agree, and I I think they're they're a little drunk on their power. It it feels like, um, right. and some of the Jedi in the novel um, understand that, and some don't. Uh, but I I really I really like it. I I thought the novel was a really good novel. I really liked the the after show. I really liked because I hadn't. I had an idea of what the Nihil looked like, but they showed art from some of the comics that the Nihil are in, and I was instantly like, oh, I like that way better than my thought. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Right. Uh, and I ended up really liking the designs they showed on that show. So if you're a fan, go check it out. It's on Star Wars uh, YouTube official channel. Um, and uh, the host, whose name I'm also forgetting because I'm horrible, um, Who's the one who was, you know, being attacked by the horrible people of the world? Um, did an incredible job. I, I was, yeah. I was curious to see what kind of job she would do after everything that happened, and she is absolutely fantastic. I thought she was funny for 20 minutes to put in that much humor while also asking serious questions. Shows you're a really strong reporter, um, and just good at what you do. And she is very good at what she does. And I'm glad that she's the one we get to, we get to go on this journey with. Uh, kind of diving into the the high republic absolutely um so with that being said let's switch over to something that is uh i was never contra oh i yes, did actually sir. uh speaking of books before we leave that i'm uh i know that we've been talking back and forth as you mm. were finishing up the aftermath uh books well sorry book i have one. about two hours left of the aftermath novel yeah of book book one right yes okay I have that one behind me. Uh, and I was actually, I, I, I remember us chatting about this but, and then thought, oh man, what, we, uh, we should actually we do a small little segment on the, uh, on the show. I, I was really curious as to what some of your thoughts are on Aftermath. Uh, so I, has been. I read Aftermath when it first came out, um, but I am, I'll just be transparent with you here, uh, Movie Meals, another Happy Landing fans. I, I'm just not a strong reader. I never have been. I have a hard time with physical reading. That's where Audible has become a saving grace for myself. Um, and so a lot of the times I have trouble remembering a lot of the things I read because I just am ADHD and it's hard to focus. Um, but uh, I remember reading it and being like, that was okay. And now and then I decided to re-listen to it. So I, I had some free, a bunch of saved up credits on Audible and I grabbed it and uh, Decided to give it another shot because I was curious of that timeline, and I feel about the same that I remember. It's uh, it's uh, it's okay. Um, the narrator's the same guy who does the High Republic, and he's he's really good. And I I like the characters. You get some stuff with Wedge and Han, um, which is pretty cool. But for the most part, it's just kind of an okay read to me. And I I want to finish the the trilogy eventually, but it's it's just a little drier for me than than other novels where. No, I don't necessarily need Jedi because I think Lost Stars proved that because Lost Stars isn't about Jedi and it's not about characters I know. But this one just 
even has characters I know, and I just still don't love it. I just think it's kind of the weaker books. It's part of a story I just am not as interested in. Um, I wonder if it'll get better with the sequel novels. I, I've heard they're all about the same, but uh, yeah, I have about two hours left. I've liked the second half a little more than the first half, which I think is because they're building up to a cliffhanger <laughs> is what it feels like is coming. So, uh, But yeah, something I'm, it's, I'm, it's been a good read. Something I'm wildly curious about with that series is um, did, did you get the feeling uh, uh, while this was – while you're reading this that – they had an overarching idea or plan as they moved into the sequels? Or do you feel as though that this was way more of like, uh, oh, we just got to, like, let's get a fun story that we know we have to uh, throw some interconnectivity between episode six and episode seven? I I haven't read any of the sequel stuff yet. Um, I think there's three books. Um, but it, it kind of gives off a vibe like, Like, Kathy came up to them and said, J.J. has this time in between episodes six and seven where there's a big battle and you need to make a novel about it. And that's what it just kind of feels like happened. And the novel's fine. And I think um, I can't remember who wrote it, uh, but I I, and I think that writer is a good writer. I just it just is drier to me. It's just not as entertaining. I don't find the moments um necessarily as hard hitting as I did in Light of the Jedi or Catalyst or Lost Stars. So I just think it's kind of an okay novel. I, I for a full through line, I I need to get to the other books, I think, before at least get halfway probably through the next novel to f- to find that out. Okay. Okay. That yeah, cuz I mean if if there is one thing that I will say about Light that uh what they're doing with Light of the Jedi, um I really get this sense and feeling that from the moment that they sat down in that room to discuss what they were doing with this time period and what they're doing with this whole combined uh, mediums and universe is they really feel like they have a plan from beginning to end. They know where they want to go from point A to point B, which... And the... Go ahead, sorry. uh, Unfortunately, the sequel trilogy, I just... Uh, never really felt like they. I. I. It, it felt more like, all right, we're winging it, and we're just gonna slap people in here, um, to make good movies, and then we'll go with that. And unfortunately, I. It tends to suffer from that, which I think will lead us in, rather nicely to. I want to say something about okay. that real quick, okay. though. You are correct. It does lead in very nicely, but I do want to say something about it. Uh. I, I think Kathy, st- and I think these novels are kind of like that, where she kind of did the George Lucas thing, where it was like, yeah, you can put my name on it, and uh, call it Star Wars, and I'll publish it. Like, I think she just started like that, and I think The Last Jedi had such a reaction that um, for these later novels, she realized she can't do that. They have to collaborate, and I think that's what's changed. Because when they show the collaboration, and they show some footage of it in the the show um uh about the high republic it's it's all of them at like you know in a writer's room with a big whiteboard saying where can we put this character at this time and whatnot and it always takes me back to and I, I think Kathy has changed her tune and I think John Favreau and Dave Filoni are big a big hand in making that a right. legit thing. Cause if you if you listen to Sam Whitworth's story about solo it's insane when he talks about the lightsaber, and I've told it on the podcast. I'm going to tell it again for the audience if you're new. But Sam Witwer tells a story about when he was brought in to voice Darth Maul again, and then Ray Park was brought in to be the character. Spoiler for the end of Solo, it's when Darth Maul shows up as the leader of Crimson Tide. And uh, one of the like producers was talking to Sam Witwer and was like, yeah, and then your double-bladed bladed lightsaber is going to fly over. And Sam was like, whoa, 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 uh, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> um he doesn't have the double bladed lightsaber and they're like, what do you mean? And he's like, like you can tell Sam's like, is this guy, (laughs) how is this guy doing a star Wars producing a star Wars film? And he's like, no, these are your choices. It depends on the time frame and where exactly he lines up. He could have the inquisitor lightsaber. He could have the dark saber. He could have this. Um, and then they end up going with the inquisitor lightsaber. I believe don't, doesn't he have the inquisitor lightsaber? You can see it's, it's got the, the, got the the circle that's, that's like half broken on it. Yeah, and um, 
and it just shows there was no plan. And we'll get into that more with the Ryan Johnson stuff about a plan, which again, like Tanner said, is a great segue to the news where uh, we got a little bit of news this week that a Ryan Johnson's trilogy is reportedly back on. Um, I have it pulled up on IGN, which is out of all of the websites that I was scrolling through is the one I think has the most kind of uh, very clout. Rep- also very reputable. Yes, IGN does it right. Like, a lot of the sites that were reporting this are, like, Star Wars fandom, which is a good site, but or Cine, Cineblend, um, which I've seen on YouTube, some of those guys who write for that website. It's just not, it's not a collider. It's not a Variety or the Hollywood Reporter that's reporting this. So you take it with a grain of salt, but... Could I get you but, a link? Um, could I get you a link that to me, actually? Sure. That specific the IGN article? article? Yes. Yeah, um, so while I'm doing that, the article basically, Ryan John. this is basically what happened. Ryan Johnson was being interviewed by um, an author named Sarah Wilson. Um, I don't know what the interview was for. Uh, there's the link for you, Tanner. Thank you. Um, so the filmmaker who directed Star Wars Last Jedi, the middle chapter of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, recently sat down for an interview with author Sarah Wilson. I'm going to click that link because I want to know a little bit more about her. Um, let's see. Sarah Wilson is a best-selling author um, and writes for USA Today. Uh, so she's got, she's got some, some gravitas behind her. Um, I'm not sure what the interview was for, but in their discussion... Um, and then Sarah Wilson tweeted it, said that, uh, Ryan, the tweet says, I'm just going to post this now because I can see that I'm going to get a lot of requests. Yes. Ryan Johnson's star Wars trilogy is still on no dates or timelines because he has other projects going on, but it is happening. And then put in all caps. That is all I know about it with three, uh, kind of grinning emojis. And, um, I think there's a lot of angles to take this. Um, absolutely. uh, so before I'll, I'll jump to your thoughts here in a second, Tanner, but I want to give a little context. So uh, Last Jedi came out in 2017, uh, 2018, 2017, if I'm not mistaken. It was I think I think it was the end of 2017, Christmas 2017, and it was reported right before it came out that Ryan Johnson was going to be directing his own Star Wars trilogy. We knew nothing about it that he was just going to write and direct an entire trilogy of films. Um, and then it, Kathy kept being asked about it. She kept saying, yes, it's happening. And then eventually she kind of stopped letting people ask. And she didn't necessarily say it wasn't happening, but she kept being like, we have other projects. And when they do like D23 or the Investor's Day announcement, they announced Acolyte and all of these cool projects. No Ryan Johnson trilogy. You know, they announced High Republic. Kevin Feige's doing something. Taika Waititi's directing the next Star Wars film. Patty Jenkins. Where is Ryan Johnson? And everybody still wonder about it. And it's like, you know, it's like you're in denial with a girl you've broken up with. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, just say you're not together anymore, Kathy. Like, yeah. it just rip the Band-Aid off. But then this comes out. So, Tanner, what are your, what are your thoughts? What's your well, speculation? First, first off, as you're, as you're kind of going through that and discussing, discussing with the D23, because, I mean, that was way more of an investors meeting more than anything. Really kind of to get the, people the excited. Recent one, yeah. The recent one was. But, right. in, be, but before COVID, they always did their D23, which was basically the same thing. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, see, what I'm kind of surprised by with that one, and I guess it kind of makes sense, is that the Ryan Johnson trilogy is, uh, or sorry, the Ryan Johnson movie, Last Jedi, is the most divisive in Star Wars at the moment. Um, and it almost makes me wonder if they completely veered away from it because they they didn't want to put it out there. Uh to make it scare any investors or cause any sort of ruckus with Disney, but behind closed doors, they're still actually doing it. Um, man, I we keep on teasing uh, like our differences and views on the Last Jedi, and I'm so excited for when we actually get to like sit down, watch it, and get to dissect yeah. it with each It'll other. Be fun. But like like I've said many times before, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Al's a uh, big fan of it. Um, very big fan. But, uh, so, I don't, Ryan Johnson, I- even though I am not the biggest fan of The Last Jedi, he is still an incredible oh. filmmaker. And 
man, like it, as I am talking about, there was there was no through line between uh, between JJ and Ryan, and then JJ again. You can tell that there was is there was a review. There was an interview that came out sometime after, uh, what was it the, uh, the last uh, the last no, gosh darn it, what's the name of the last movie? I'm Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. There we go. I can't stand that movie that much that I just ugh. God. Ugh, it's it's bottom three. It's so yeah. bad. <laughs> it's, I... it's not good. Uh, anyways, um, so that came out, and some, uh, someone, I, I it might have actually been Kathleen, had come out and said, oh, yeah, it was our plan the entire time to actually have uh, Palpatine, like, come in the end. And it's like, are you... When did Kathy say that? I don't know if it I was Kathy or it was someone else. that Someone had directly said that it was our plan the entire time to have Palpatine show up. I remember, I remember JJ in an interview talked about how he said that when they sat down in the writer's room, they had basically like printed out cards of like options for the story mm. and they and Palpatine as the villain was one of those cards and he said it just always stayed on the table till they eventually eliminated pretty much everything else and decided to go with it i haven't heard that so i'm i'm just curious where we're hearing I different things don't remember who said who said it um i will see if i can find no you keep talking i'm going to look it up uh it's yeah, the fact the fact that someone even uh, even might say that in the uh, in the beginning it just between aftermath and Force Awakens and Last Jedi all the way up to Rise of Skywalker, there really feels like no through line between any of them. There really doesn't. And also, not to mention, I I genuinely believe from a storytelling perspective that one of the greatest stories that is told, it's a very classical story, but it's the arc of Darth Vader in the original trilogy. And Rise of Skywalker single-handedly just kicks that whole uh, that whole story arc, it just sweeps it under its feet. The Basically, like, the sacrifice and everything that Darth Vader has done to try and take out Palpatine in that moment is completely taken away. Um... Now, granted, I mean, I'll give it to you that there are, Palpatine is an incredibly powerful and uh, thinks ahead with a lot of his moves and ha can have a lot of contingency plans. That makes sense. But to have a contingency plan that he understood that Vader was going to kill him all along when he classically has this idea that he's got him under his control, and that's one of the big things is that Vader comes, comes out and he's like, no, you don't have me under your control. I value my son's life instead of fear you more uh it, sorry that was a little bit of a rant uh <laughs> um, no i as you were talking though i pulled up a hollywood reporter article I, I can't really find anything specific but this is a big interview he did with the hollywood reporter jj and it's funny because he says he says how uh Emperor Palpatine always had backup plans and then the off the the interviewer goes wasn't the second death star already plan b and JJ just goes, fine, this is plan C. <laughs> and everything I'm reading, just, there was no plan. No. There was no plan. No. And, you know, I'm going to, here's what I, I have stood by this stance for a long time, and I will continue to stand by this stance. I don't think not having a plan is bad. I think being reactionary is bad. If, yes, I think if you show up with a game plan, you're better off. But... Kathy decided not to. She decided to let three very talented filmmakers make their movies. And there was backlash. And I still maintain that the backlash was not 50-50. I actually think it is higher percentage people liking the movie than disliking it. I think it's just a louder uh, minority. Um, and... I think Kathy saw that and she's like, I have ruined Star Wars. I need to get back. I, like I, my legacy will be that I've ruined Star Wars. And I think when she said that she sat down with um, Colin Trevorrow, read his script and just decided this isn't it. We should bring JJ back. It's what the fans want. The fans are screaming for JJ. Let's bring JJ back. Um, and I think JJ was like, I don't think JJ really had a huge plan with anything. I don't think he ever thought Palpatine was going to be the main villain. I think he definitely wanted it to be Snoke or Kylo. 
hate well, to say not it, Kylo, but, I hate but to say Snow. It. Well, I, I mean, I, I say I hate to say it, but J.J. also admitted multiple times that he was uh, he was very excited to do Star Wars, but he was scared. That, oh, yeah. I mean, you, who in their right mind doesn't get a hold of the sequels of the main storyline of Star Wars, and you are not scared out of your mind to... And he did a great job in the first one because he was scared. He was cautious. He made sure not to hurt the legacy. He made sure that the story made sense. And J.J. is great at asking questions. J.J. has never... He's never proven that he can answer questions. He didn't answer his own questions well in Rise of Skywalker. Right. And so, to get kind of back on track here, <laughs> Ryan, so Ryan Johnson was told you can go any direction you want and there <clears throat> there's a very famous scene in the documentary and he brought he's brought it up multiple times and so is mark hamill that mark hamill said i fundamentally disagree with where you're taking the character of luke skywalker as the actor i disagree um i'm okay that an actor disagrees with the writer because actors usually aren't good writers there's a few exceptions but usually actors are not writing for a reason because they're not strong storytellers and Ryan Johnson is a strong storyteller. The stuff he has written is excellent. And I think just from a writing standpoint, I think The Last Jedi works pretty much very well. Um, I don't think Canto Bite works, but I think he was trying to pay a little homage to the prequels. And it also, just also one of the work. most boring, uh, one of the most boring space chase scenes that we've seen in Star Wars. We're gonna wait for the enemies. To, we're gonna wait for to run out of gas. It's boring. It's boring. Uh, yeah, I don't mind it. Um, but I I I'll get think to that later. <laughs> when cat when you when you say we're not gonna have a plan, and then you know this is this is the exact same thing that my former head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles Doug Peterson did in the last game of the year. He went in and said this is what we or her plan was, no plan. The plan is you you three are talented. Make your movies, and whoever is second gets to change it, and whoever's last gets to end it the way they think it should end. Because you're all strong storytellers, and that's not. And that's what Doug P did. He said, we're going to run with this. And then he pulled the notable in the, in the fourth quarter, and it caused a lot of problems, including his job. And J.J., J.J. was, uh, I defended him when, when Colin was, was taken off. I defended J.J. is going to, going to fix it. He's going to give fans what he wants with still honoring the story, and he didn't. He didn't honor the story. Ryan, in this cl- clip, you know, talks about how, he says it a lot. I will never give the fans something if it will destroy the story. And I very much agree to that. I actually think the trilogy ends up being better if they keep Ryan and he does two and three. I think the story is better if Colin stays and we get the awesome Duel of the Fate script that I really liked. Um, or J.J. has to do all three. I don't. I, clearly, the m- biggest mistake was JJ doing one and three, and somebody else doing two. And yes, you could. I mean, I, if Ryan changes his movie, I don't think uh, Colin stays on. Like I, right. I, I people just don't like the way Luke was really handled. I really like how Luke is handled. I come from a different background with Luke, though, and we'll touch on that when we review the movie later. Um, but I really like the Ray stuff. I hate the Ray stuff in Rise of Skywalker. I hate it. She is going on an awesome path, I think, in The Last Jedi. And she is treated like garbage in the last movie. Garbage. So I think Ryan Johnson is a strong storyteller. I think he is very good. And that documentary shows us that he is a massive Star Wars fan. Like, like people keep believing he's not. Ryan Johnson, I think, might be the nerdiest in Star Wars of all of the directors that we've had in Star Wars. Mm. I think he is up there above every... I think he's the nerdiest of... I think he is as nerdy as Jon Favreau. Like, I think he would get along with those guys swimmingly. I don't know if I think anyone, he's that I, nerdy. I, I really get the feeling that I'm not sure if anyone actually out-nerds uh, Dave Filoni, but maybe... Well, when you were the hand-picked Padawan to George Lucas, yeah. you'll always win the day. <laughs> Wait, you he, win it. He was such he was such a such a big nerd for Star Wars, and then has now joined the driver's seat. So he kind of yeah. turns into the dude of like, no, that's canon. No, I don't. I don't care what you yeah. say. That's canon. <laughs> yeah, because that- Kathy realized 
Go not ahead. That Dave, not that Dave would ever do that, but... Oh, I bet you he has. <laughs> uh, even, even in the round table, he kind of says some little comments like that, where he's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. Kathy, quiet. Like, <laughs> you clearly don't know what you're talking about, uh, girl. So, uh, I, you know, it, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get too much into the, into the... It's uh, hard not to. Uh, into the Last Jedi discussion and so on, but I do agree with you that Ryan Johnson is a great filmmaker, do I personally feel as though that he handled the series, um, handled some of our legacy characters or some of the moments in Last Jedi? Great. No. Are there great storytelling moments that are occurring in that? Yes. Um, but I would love to see him direct a trilogy. I really would. Even though I would too. there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me with that one. But I genuinely think that if you give him the skeletons of Star Wars... And he doesn't have to tell a story in the Skywalker saga that he could make something genuinely incredible. He really, really could. Um, but I, I just, I want him to stay away from the legacy, uh, from just anything to do with the current timeline that we're at. I, I want to give him a blank canvas to do whatever he wants to do and tell a story of wherever he wants to tell it in the galaxy. Yeah. I completely agree. Love that. I completely agree. Uh, it, it's, I mean, um, whether whether you love whether you love or, or hate Last Jedi, I, I just, uh, because some people are going to love the way that he handles the legacy characters. Some people are going to poo-poo it and say that that's not good. And if he had gone the other way, then, I mean, most likely there was going to be people saying, Really, this is this just feels more like fan service more than anything. Or uh, while other people are saying, "No, this is exactly what I wanted," you you're not going to be able to exactly please everybody. Yeah, you never will. And they tried no. with Rise of Skywalker and failed miserably. Uh, Rise but, of Skywalker might be my least favorite. I like half the time. I think I've convinced myself that I I hate that one the most. Like I put a Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones over it. <laughs> I, I sometimes sit there and think I do, and the rewatch will help me decide that permanently. The rewatch will definitely help me decide that because I, I think Attack of the Clones might be a little bit lower. Maybe. Yeah, but I have the nostalgia. Uh, I didn't have the nostalgia for Rise of Skywalker. What? What kind of... Uh, what is a time period that you would love to see him, like a story that either, one, a trilogy that you would like to see him, and what time period? So, I think the answer has always been for, like, every director is High Republic, High Republic, High Republic. And now we're getting that. And he could do a High Republic trilogy, and it could be set uh, with new characters we don't know from the novels. Um, right. It could be the characters from the novels. I think he... I think High Republic would be good. I think he, if he went to the armies of Sith and Jedi, I think he he could do a Revan story, I think, almost better than anybody. Because I think he's very good when you watch his episode of Breaking Bad that he directed, or um, when you watch Looper, he's very good at hand or Knives Out, very good at handling distinct characters. And Revan is such a distinct character who has such an interesting arc that it'd be cool to see him take on uh, Revan and and make Revan his own. Yeah. Then again, that's also dealing with for a lot of fans that's dealing with a character they love and they're going to be turned off by that right away. Right. So it'd also be cool for him to go millions of years or thousands of years in the future from his own movie. And let's say maybe the Jedi are back to their height of power or not, or we're but, just following like there's just small, you know, there's just like clans of Jedi. Oh or what if there was? What if it was a situation where where almost there was a there was a galaxy wide like catastrophe that occurs where basically everyone winds up dying and then life has just begun to like start back up in the galaxy and people are coming across all of these interesting jedi ruins like what what's happening here what is this all about that'd be kind of cool like uh or even going back to some of the very first jedi who discovered the force go back bring in some of the wills he even touches on the wills in The Last Jedi, and he's the only director to do so, which is, again, why he is the bigger nerd of J.J. Um, uh, or, like, Gareth Edwards or something. Right. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, it'd be cool to see him take on maybe something that does take place in the timeline, but that we don't think about. Like, not a bounty hunter movie, but 
you know, something like we don't know. Maybe he's written a script. Maybe he's written a treatment. And if he has, what if he was like, look, I have a I have a trilogy for Obi-Wan Kenobi right now, ready to go. And it's awesome. Like, I would love him to do an Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I also love The Last Jedi. So everybody else might not like it, but it'd be hard. It's a little harder to ruin last, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think, than Luke. Um, Right. I also want to point this out. You're handed a an interesting torch from JJ when it comes to Luke. And I think people, and, and if you don't like it, I think yes, Ryan deserves uh, most of the blame if you don't like the way Luke's handled. But a part of that is on JJ. JJ sidelines Luke Skywalker for the entire movie. It's like, what, what is it? Why? Why would he abandon everybody? JJ set up the question, why does Luke Skywalker abandon the, the galaxy? How why does Luke he, Skywalker ab- abandons everybody? How long is, is, he, because- is he gone for? I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. Is is he? He's. Oh, gone it's supposed to be like, like a long time. Uh, yeah, I want to say he's gone for either like ten or twenty years. I th- I don't know. Like thirteen came into my head, but it, it's something like that. Like he has been gone for a long time, and R two D two has the map, and he's just been deactivated. It's kind of ridiculous. But like J J or Ryan wasn't necessarily handed a great question, and everybody wanted it to be that Luke was training on some island. But, you know, at the end, it was Luke, like, training to become this elite, super powerful Jedi. Right. And it's like, what other direction do you go in? Like, what, like, what honestly can you give the, the audience when you're handed Luke Skywalker has abandoned everybody? He's missing? He's not missing, JJ. You wrote that he abandoned the galaxy. He left them at their time of need. So I, I've always stood by this. I think JJ need, gets needs to get some of the flack for for starting on the path of ruining Luke because it's hard to take him any other direction. No, you're you're you are 100 is a galaxy. Correct. You are absolutely correct. That this has gone uh, into a last Jedi combo. Sorry. No, it it, it kind of has. Uh, always has. To. I I <laughs> always. Uh, anyways, it it just you're you are absolutely correct in. I, I think it is a genuine, not only a disservice to to the story to have him sidelined for the first Star Wars movie for so long. I mean, even Hamill had that thing of, uh, he talked about during the script reading of being like, oh my god, are you, like, this is the perfect moment for Luke to show up. And then it turns out that he's just going to be a dude that nods in the distance to Rey when, he, when she finally, like, shows up to the planet. And... Uh, yeah, it's a massive, also a massive disservice. I personally think to our legacy, uh, our legacy cast. I it, it would have been so nice to see um, Harrison Ford, uh, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill all in the same. Pl- also, not to mention if like Peter Mayhew and Ant, like get get let's get the original crew all together for at least a couple of shots. Come on, man, that's. That's a travesty, and I, I I know that um Carrie and I think Hamill all like consistently talked about like that's that was a bit of a uh, that sucked. I wanted I wanted all of us to be there, but I don't know. Uh, man, we'll get into that in the rewatch, but I do think JJ deserves way more of the flack than he has given you're, for what he handed yes. Ryan. Uh, yes, yes. There, there's some softballs, but there, it, it just feels weird to have Luke disappear for six years. I, I, I just looked it up. He was in exile for six years. Um, okay, six, six years he abandons the galaxy, whether at war. Right. Like, Leia. And uh, JJ wrote that. JJ wrote that. Not Ryan Johnson. JJ wrote that Luke Skywalker abandons the galaxy, and everybody's mad that he wasn't there to be the savior. And J.J. started that. I'm just that, pointing that out there. And J.J. To, started it. And not to mention, if he does... Uh, how much does that overshadow our new characters that we're trying to love if he does disappear for six years to then become this uber Jedi that's just going to be this absolute monster and he walks in walks in, and just starts mopping the floor with people? That What? That's it. You are completely overshadowing... Ray and Finn and Poe and all of these fun and it well they were these fun and interesting characters in the beginning <laughs> that were handled so poorly. Uh, uh, man, it's it's uh, 
it's just it's just whack. But I, I'm glad we're both on the same page that we both would like to see Ryan Johnson still tackle something. And I like that we can disagree on the movie he made, but still understand that. Because I, I got right. in this argument with uh, uh, Benny Off and Weiss all the time with Game of Thrones, where people were like, I never want to see them direct anything ever again or write anything ever again. It's like, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. Because these guys are talented guys. Yes, they messed up something very good, and they messed something up at the end when it's supposed to be the most important part. But for the, for you to completely abandon them is insane. Ridley Scott has made some of the greatest movies of all time, and then he went on 10 years of making nothing but turds. And then he made <laughs> The Martian. You're telling me you don't like The Martian? Because Ridley, like you are going to abandon Ridley Scott all of a sudden? It's ridiculous. People people need to understand who Ryan Johnson is and respect that he is a uber nerd and that he would do a great job with the trilogy. And you can give him and anybody. Give so, him a Padawan and a master in Revenge of the Sith that we've never heard of in that timeline and we just follow them. That'd be awesome. So uh, I was just I, I just pulled up and was looking up some of his filmography. And two of two of my favorite movies... One of them I know is highly regarded. That uh, actually, two of them are highly regarded that I haven't watched yet. So that's a huge disservice of me. But um, *Knives Out* is probably one of the best films I've watched in the past decade. Period. It's uh, so good. It's, it's incredible. So um, and then *Looper*. I is I I love *Looper*. I Amazing. love *Looper*. E even though it's uh, amazing. even though it's uh, it's got some time travel and some wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff going on, uh, I still it, it's it's an incredibly fun rom awesome. of a movie, uh, and those just just those as examples are some of my favorite movies. So why so why not give a we know this man is talented, so why not give him a fresh slate in the Star Wars universe to do that and create something new and he interesting and fun. He directed the most diversive episode of Breaking Bad. We knew he would do something ridiculous and and cause drama. He's, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, he's, he's directed so, three episodes: Osmandias, Fifty One, and Fly. Yeah, Breaking the Fly Bad. is the one that gets people. Fly, Fly. The, I don't. Are you there yet? You have had a weird relationship with Breaking Bad, I'm sir. In the, I'm in the beginning of season five. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember exactly well, well, where it you is. Know what? Well, we're, so, we're you should it. know it if you've seen it, but it's, it's an episode that diverts oh, from the storyline. He it takes some time to develop character. Yes, yes, it's, it has to do with uh, Walter as he's trying to. Yeah, nope, I remember it. He's trying to kill the fly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's an awesome episode <laughs> because it shows Walt's complete mental dive within himself and his perfectionist attitude he has now it's it's an incredible episode right anyway right. let's uh we might actually end on time this time uh <laughs> why don't we spend the next like 10 15 minutes and touch on the force um because we wanted to kind of talk about maybe some of our favorite and least favorite moments uh with the the force and the way it's used and handled because the force has gone through so many changes with how it was treated uh, in video games, to stuff that's now EU, to stuff that's not. I mean, we're seeing uh, so Star we're, Killer. We're allowed Force to Unleashed. draw from any 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 Star Wars. I think canon. so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If it's not if it's not canon, then I, it's something you'd love to see come back because because like Star Killer in the Force Unleashed like rips stuff out of the sky. He's so strong in the Force, which is where a lot of people got. I want Luke to rip a Star Destroyer out in the Last Jedi response and then they didn't get it and they cried like little babies um on reddit but uh yeah so tanner do you have one off the top of your head what's uh oh. one of your favorite uses of the force absolute 110 percent you asked me this question before the show and my mind immediately went there uh in to where uh my favorite use of the force was and that's on dagobah with yoda pulling the x-wing out of the swamp it is one of like as a child. It is it is it's one awesome. of the, like the most goosebump tingling moments as he's just calmly lifting it out. The music the <clears throat> music is swelling in oh, that moment. Oh God, Williams! And then and then he Luke is just awestruck as this X wing is pulled out and set right in front of him, and he just asks, "How? How did you do that?" And that is why you fail. Yeah, it's so good. It's written so well, and Yoda is so small, and Luke believes he can't do it, and he 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 looks down on Yoda up until this point, even though Yoda is training him, 
And when Yoda lifts it, he just looks at him like, oh my gosh. And it's one of the one of the small moments in Rise of Skywalker I like is when Luke has the same moment to Rey and lifts the, the X-Wing out, uh, even though Rey can probably do it just fine. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's one of the few moments I do kind of like. And uh, yeah, that moment is awesome. Um, I do want to mention this too. You're caught up with WandaVision, correct? I am caught up with WandaVision. So, spoiler for WandaVision, if you haven't seen it, just, uh, I don't know, mute for a second, and I'll wave when you can unmute. <laughs> um, but they kind of, they pay homage to to Star Wars and Empire. When she's walking through that corridor, and it's got the vines and everything, it's the exact same looking shot, very similar music, right. and, and the eerie smoke as when Luke walks into to uh to face vader where he ultimately faces himself and i just drops to like six frames a second (laughs) yes it's awesome i i saw that and immediately thought of star wars and then i immediately thought of tanner and i was like you know tanner's just as giddy right now about this (laughs) as i am they're paying homage stars but you can unmute i guess now um but yeah and that is one of my favorite moments to stick with empire strikes back is when luke when you can use the force as as a way to to check yourself and that's what he does he has a vision and a battle with himself and he doesn't know it's himself and it shows what he can become in the future if he is not careful and i I, i've always loved that it's it's uh, i'm a big fan of anime and the the anime that kind of started my love is naruto and he has a moment like that very late in the series where he has a fight with his inner self. And I, I, I've always loved that because I think that's at the heart of Star Wars. And I think it's at the heart of us as people is fighting our inner selves and, and the dark parts we don't necessarily like and how we, we can uh, stop those or change those or befriend those in Naruto's case because that's what he does. He befriends his inner, inner self. And, right. and Luke defeats his inner self but then realizes he can become that if he's not careful. Um, which he continues to struggle with his whole life, like in Last Jedi. <laughs> but uh, anyway, do you have another moment you really like? Oh, other moments that I actually really like. Um, you know, weirdly enough, uh, eh, I don't know why this is automatically one of the ones that like pops into my head. Well, okay. Another, uh, uh, God, I could talk about like uses of the force that I absolutely love. Um, but honestly, my next one is... Uh, uh, these aren't the droids you're looking for. I was just thinking the hand wave. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's, yeah, sorry, touch on it, please. It's, oh gosh, well, just Alec, Alec Guinness being Alec Guinness uh, as he just as he just rolls up and it's just a quick wave of these aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along, move along, and move along. Uh, and he he just starts he starts waving him he starts waving him on by and Luke really kind of has this uh, he's really kind of in that like young uh, farm boy like I don't know what's going on here right now <laughs> and <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, it's um it, it's it's just one of those fun uh, fun little powers that the Force has always you you you've been able to like generate with the force that I absolutely, I, I really, I really, really they like. You control the weak minded and yes. it brings up cool moments, even in some of the bad movies where you get characters who, you know, like I, a Phantom Menace has its problems, but when he try, when Qui-Gon tries the hand wave yeah. and he's like, no, only money. It's like, okay. <laughs> like I, there's some cool moments with that, that the Jedi still have no, to deal with. They uh, won't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, Another moment I really like, and George kind of, you know, when he started doing stuff with the Wills, which are kind of canon, right? They're canon because they're in R- Rebels. The Wills are in Rebels or talked about. Uh, the the Wills, the Wills, if I'm not mistaken, were actually in uh, season six of the Clone Wars um, when Yoda goes. I believe they're Wars. mentioned in Rebels, too, because I believe Bendu mentions them. Oh, I am the and man. that's. That's yeah. The the Bendu and the Wills, uh, you know, the Wills, where the Force guides you into the direction you're destined to be in, mm. um, but you still are able to make your decisions off of your own free will. Is just, 
it, it's on the nose, George, with giving the characters the names the Wills. Um, but I love it, and I love the Bendu, and I love this balance where it's like, no, in life you do choose where you're going, and that is what the Force is. It takes you in that direction, but you have the power to change it. Right. And it goes along with the Empire Strikes Back scene, but I just that's what I love when the Bendu shows up, and I can't wait to rewatch the show because I I just I love the Bendu and I love Kanan's arc with the Bendu. Oh. Um. It's just so good where it's like, I'm not light nor dark. I'm just part of the force. And it's just, it's a cool moment. The force isn't necessarily good versus evil all the time. It is, it is peace and it is, it is inner peace within yourself. And Kanan honestly winds up being one of the best Jedi. That's like, he is one of the best characters. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He just is. It's awesome. I uh, love Kanan. If I'm going to talk Shout about Freddie Prince, one of my, uh, I, I've got a couple, I've got a couple other like good moments as well, but one of my least favorite, and this, I know that people are going, uh, people are not going to like me for this hot take, but, um, one of my least favorite actually uses of the force is almost the entirety of the force unleashed. Um, I have, wow. You I think have, it's just too OP. It, it's dude. We like, don't get me wrong. I want to have moments of the force that are like really strong. But when you have a character that is doing just these absolutely absurd things with the Force consistently, it it really makes the Force lose its its magic in my mind. It sure. it, it turns it turns way too much into into uh, the <laughs> the people that you grew up with that were constantly trying to like talk about like. No, this character's so powerful because he turns into a god. No, this person turns into an even more powerful character because he becomes an ultra god. And it's where shonen anime struggles. Yes. It's when they get too insane. It's the Dragon Ball Z effect. Right. Where you can't really power up anymore because you're too powerful. And they keep doing it because it's cool to see for a while. And then it gets boring. And some of my favorite universes that have ever come to exist. I, st I mean, obviously Star Wars, but... Two, two of them being Avatar The Last Airbender and yes. uh, Full Metal Alchemist. They have yes. concrete... What I love is right at the big, like, onset of the show, they have concrete rules. There are very mm -hmm. set, very structured rules to the universe, and they never break it. They uh, bend them, but they never break them. An, an anime you would really like is called Hunter x Hunter. Um Mm -hmm. because they they follow the same thing. It's probably the best use of that in any anime. Of There are strict rules, and depending on your smarts and your ability, you can bend them really hard and get really strong, but they have huge consequences. It's a great nice. anime. I think the first two seasons are on Netflix, so if oh. you're looking for another one after Demon Slayer, you should... Uh, you should check it out. Nick loves it. If Nick finds out you're watching it, you'll he will instantly start talking to you. <laughs> See, he I loves it. The other the other thing is like um, I don't mind when the force. Like I said, I don't mind when the force gets to the point of being able to pull a star destroyer out of the air. Uh, but two things about that. One, you there needs to there needs to be a point of like you have mas gone up to a certain point of mastery in the force. Uh, like, you have been training in this for, like, just years and years and years and years and years and years, and you are in your twilight as as you've become, like, the most powerful in the Force. And on yeah. top of that, when you do pull a Star Destroyer out of the sky, there needs to be some lasting consequences on that character if you are going to yeah. bring them to that power level. But something that the old canon of, like, Old Republic does is you can get these absolutely insane uses of power in the Force... But people die, or there yeah. are a lot of consequences, or you need a ton of people to come together to actually use the Force in, yeah. in such a powerful way. Anyways, um, I've been just going off forever. Al, no, what you're are, fine. What I... are some of your least favorite? Well, I was going to say, I'm going to say another favorite real quick. Okay. okay. Uh, and it's because it is in The Last Jedi. I really like the Force projection. I think it's really hard. I think it's a new, unique power. And I like he has to locate where they are through the Force. Um, he has to locate where they are. He has to um, project himself, interact with others, and and deliver an awesome line at the end. He has a lot he has to do, and it ends up killing him. And that, I think, shows the consequence kind of balance. Right. Um, I also like the ability with the time in Rebels, where they are able to control time, and time is handled differently through the Force. But anyway, 
Some, uh, my least favorite, what I think about is the forced healing in Rise of Skywalker. And I think I would love it if it was just handled better mm -hmm. because I really, like, we don't really see Rey learn it, which we don't necessarily have to, but when she just starts to do it all the time and the second she heals that slug, you instantly know she's going to at some point fight Kylo and heal him. Right. Uh, and I just... I just wish it was used better. It's definitely something JJ took from Colin Trevorrow's script. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's ha the way it's written. I like more in, in Colin's script. So it's a power. I, I wish, um, so, I wish we saw, saw, uh, used better. I got a question for you specifically with that one. It's not the problem that you have with force healing as it is, but just the way it's used, the way it's used. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, force healing has classically been a thing. I, again, extended canon. That force healing has existed yes. before. And I've liked it in other spots. Got it. Got it. Got it. It's I, just, it's a cool idea. It makes sense you're able to heal through the force. If force is life, life through death, you're able to heal something back. Right. You can take it backwards. And I, I like that. But uh, What were your uh, thoughts uh, on, on being able to, uh, uh, between, like, the connection that kylo and ray have to where they are actually able to like i love it i i same i i really I actually love, love that like like one of the few moments to... rise of skywalker i like it, yeah, oh man there there uh, i'm uh, there's not very many big moments but like especially the moment when he like reaches back behind him and then he's like Pfft. i think it's a great thing. moment i think it's a cool thing again ryan johnson started it i like it in the last jedi and that they as they're getting more powerful their connections getting more powerful right um and i didn't think they were going to continue with it when before rise of skywalker came out because i always thought that that shot in last jedi where she closes the falcon door when they're seeing each other was saying i have shut the door on you kylo you are not allowed into my mind anymore mm. and i always thought that was a cool i'm i know who i am now moment and it wasn't but uh jj still ended up giving me one thing i did really like because i like that fight scene where they're getting so strong with their connection that they're kind of they're damaging things around them even though they're not there and it's a take on the projection that luke does and it's that is something a, a an apprentice would do an apprentice would see a master do something and then make it their own because that's what they do when they think it's interesting and it's unique and it's cool and i i i, I like that uh i like that moment um quite a bit um i had another positive what is um, it one of again another incredible force arc to be honest um when they visit uh i'm totally forgetting the name of the planet that they visit but they it, it's the father the son and the daughter uh when that they visit in clone wars that that whole arc that they have i love that arc it is such a good arc and amazing use of the force and also not to mention i mean it it, it uh just the like the subtle hints and connections that we get to the main trilogy especially like surrounding anakin and what he will do and what he will yeah. become oh man what a what a great one um i really i have a love hate relationship with the blaster stopping of blaster bolts because george never has it be super intense but Kylo does it super intense where he freezes an entire blaster bolt, which makes it look way bigger than you think that these lasers are. Um, and the only reason I have a love-hate relationship is because I really like it. But when the Kylo thing first came out, a friend of ours fought me on how Kylo's more strong, stronger than Darth Vader because of that one moment. And I lost it. Uh, I could not handle him at all. That's insane. Um, so That's I have insane. a love hate relationship with it now because of it. But uh, he wants, he literally has the line in the movie is like, I will become as strong as you, grandfather. It, and it, JJ also messed up his own questions with, with the whole Vader stuff. I just can't believe how bad Rise of Skywalker is. Kylo, Kylo is a Vader fanboy. That he is. You cannot have a fanboy of Vader with him being more powerful. That's, yeah. He's just not. Anyway. Um, well, I think this is a good place to wrap the show up. Um, for next week, we should hopefully, hopefully, have started our new novel. And um, uh, I think, uh, unless some big news breaks, I think next week, Tanner, will be the trivia battle. We're going to do a Star Wars trivia battle between the two of us before we get into... Um, 
before we get into uh, our rewatch, we, we were talking about maybe at one point doing a trivia battle after it. And then we were like, man, we should do one before and after and see if our knowledge gets, gets better. Uh, grows. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's the plan. But uh, hey, again, thank you guys to our patrons. You guys are awesome. Um, Thank you uh, for checking us out. Go check out all the other great stuff on Movie Meals. Go get some of the merch all linked in the description. Um, yeah. Anything, Tanner, you want to send off, send off here? Uh, oh, um, uh, one other thing I suppose we better announce is that our next book that we will be reading uh, yes. leading into um, yes. leading into all of this is, will be uh, Shadow of the Queen. It is a book following Padme Amidala before the events mm-hmm. of episode one. And I'm yeah, we were, very excited about it. Sorry, that. go ahead. Yeah, I'm very excited too. We were we were talking about books and I just kind of sent Tanner text. was like, you know, it might be kind of fun to do some of these Padme political books before we rewatch the prequels. Um, might be a good time. And he agreed. So that's what we're going to do. And, and they just announced that the, the third one is coming out in um, November this year. The, the the final book in that trilogy of Padme oh, is coming out in November. Nice, very nice. So it'll be it'll be nice to get ahead on that, and then we can just get the book when it comes out and and read it. Uh, the other thing that I was totally spacing out about is that um, next episode we should discuss uh, other like books of of either yes. extended canon, uh, current canon, and so on that we that we would like to uh, I love discuss it. and so on. We will. All right. Well, for another happy landing. We we had one, I guess. I don't know so bad with these outros. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.